Got this big monster in here. Big old road warrior. I'm just say it with that kind of attitude, because it's a road warrior. We're gonna go up there and take a look at it. This thing is huge. That beam right there, that's the center of my building. And the building is 100 by 100. <laughs> we got that little catwalk in the back, but this thing is enormous. I thought it was pretty big. I got one bigger than that in the bay that we're gonna do next. And that thing is a mammoth. So we're gonna go up there and take a look at it and see what, this is basically a roof. The front end of this roof over here, the wind peeled it up. So it's not really anything fancy. We're not expecting any damage under this. It's just, uh, they probably used a whole one gallon of glue on there. So we're just gonna go up there and show you what they usually do, like we do on all the other ones. One of the other things we did do is on all these slide outs here, here, and down there, there's three slide outs. Where the slide out comes out, this piece right here, way at the top right there, when it slides out like this, it goes up, see? So it turns up. They put tape in that corner and the tape failed, so we retaped it. And that's where we're, uh, we retaped all these. Then we just slid this in, so now we're going to, um, we're gonna go up there and take a look at it, but all that is all done right now. They're just peeling the roof up. That's about all we're doing. Let's go up and take hey. a look. Here's a big boy. This thing is tall. Look at that high quality tape right there to cover the metal. Spare no expense. That's all it is. Hey, this is even coming up. It's actually split right down there. The metal split it. Oh, that's sharp. That is sharp. Right there. This one too, see? It's already cut. The metal already cut it. What good is that? We'll put it on here too. That's because these two overlap. And then, uh... You barely see any glue on this roof. You barely see any, any glue. Yep. This is where it broke loose. Right here. You can see the rip it just while he was driving down the road. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that quality drywall mesh. That's what that is. Yeah, the uh, the guy put those in so it wouldn't blow around. That's what they did. I'm sure that wasn't factory. <laughs> He just wanted to transport it to us. But you can see, like, they use about a gallon. I think they use a gallon, but look at this piece right here. There's no glue there. There's really no glue there at all. You would think, I'm sure this thing cost a couple of bucks. And you would think that they'd use a little bit more glue, but there's literally no, you can see the little bit of glue right here, but see that? This here is smooth. There's no glue. And this is the same crummy roof same low budget EPDM rubber you're gonna find on a cheap little bumper pull. Is what you spend on these? That is crazy. And you know it's just a shame. But then they have the you know the typical way they put them down and they slobber them with caulking, slobber them with caulking. And then the same over here we got this just slobber with caulking. That's it. And what they want you to do is go around and then you know, put more on, more on. And the only ones putting more on is a more on. This is broke right here. But the only ones putting more on is a more on. There's no reason for that. The system isn't going to work. If you have to keep adding caulking, over caulking, over caulking, it doesn't work. So, the, uh, it's like if you bought a new set of tires and you get them from a reputable company and they come out with the invoice and the statement, here you go. Uh, by the way, here's our fine print. Make sure you fill them up with air every three months. <laughs> They're gonna go dead flat on you. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I don't want those tires. Uh, that's what they do. That's what they do in the old RV industry. As cheap as they can, as quick as they can, and sell it for as much as they can. I'll bet this is supposed to be a roof vent. Yeah, that's what it is. There it is. This is their idea of a roof vent. Now, one, I don't know how it's going to vent. See all that insulation in there? So, 
they use this as a marketing scheme and they'll say hey we've gave you roof vent because what's gonna it'll it'll help get some of the heat out of that attic area you know this roof cavity area keep you cooler well it isn't gonna do anything one because you got insulation blocking it that would be one reason why it isn't gonna work and the other reason why it isn't gonna work is on any roof even like a regular house on the top where the ridge is there's a vent that usually runs along then on the eave where the gutter is there's another vent it's called the soffit vent it's called a ridge vent on the top and that's how the air flows if you don't have anything on the bottom it can't draw and why it's just right here and nowhere else why is it way over here on the edge that doesn't make sense either you'd think you'd want it as high or as up to the center as possible but nope so that's all that is we're gonna end up blocking that hole up it does zero that's all it does so then we got this fancy dancy antenna I didn't even know they still made these things I thought they got rid of them usually uh, if you've got one of these antennas everybody goes around they look and they go yep it's okay all right great and then they move on and what they don't look at is the wire look at the wire look where it goes down in that boot see it uh, that little bit of droplets will get down in there when it does it'll get in here it'll rot this area out and then eventually it'll spread just so let's call it chronic leak but that is just so slight it is so slight I can tell you how many times we've fixed them on uh, just on a commercial application where they've done them in water with run down wires and stuff because of improper installation but uh, that's like I said that's you got it put some just lift the lift this up you know you can lift that boot up that's stuck on there pretty good actually but uh, just lift it up load some caulking on there and put it and if you can get some around here do not use silicone do not use silicone remove silicone from your vocabulary silicone does not stick to rubber that's rubber this roof was rubber do not use silicone it is just kind of it's deceptive you'll put it on there and you'll think everything is okay and that silicone will have failed and you keep looking at it and go oh, it looks like it's good nope it's not and you can go back and rub it with your finger and that thing will work loose this is where we fix the right in here that I was telling you earlier there's this piece right here that's the top of the roof right here and there's a piece of tape for this metal that comes out and it returns up right there and that's what we did we put more tape on that so but uh, but we'll be back with more once we get the roof on we got to get all these components off but this is pretty much a straightforward you know take all the components off we just clean them all up make the curbs and then um, put the roof down keep going so this is a straightforward one it's not not too much to repairs or anything like that we'll be back we'll check out this ladder on this road warrior can you see that so we're gonna we're gonna fix that if you have one of these ladders like this I'm gonna show you where your leaks usually come from right in there right in there so you got this screw here this screw here and here and that goes down and then no one usually seals this like we'll be whoops hit my camera there like right here that need to be sealed the water will get in there and then it gets down into there's a on this plate there's a screw that comes up into here and there's a special nut inside here but we'll pull all this back and tighten it up and straighten it out but that's the way that works you know and then around here we've got this screw right here we'll probably get some sealant on that we're gonna see if we can get that screw all the way in though that one looks loose too but see this butyl that's butyl this butyl is dry and what happens is butyl can be your best friend or your worst enemy when it's sealed up underneath it's okay but when it's not like this and it gets that dry it will suck the water in and then it will cause a leak that way it'll actually pull the water in so there's nothing even on the top here okay so you want to get all that when you go to go around and caulk your coach and seal it up you want to get that and do not use silicone we've already went over that i know what you're thinking don't use silicone though don't do it you'll be back here okay here we got over here To make sure all this is tight right here right here you want to go around all your lights you want to go around all that stuff even like around here so you want to make sure all these are all sealed everything's sealed you want to make sure this is sealed that's sealed if water hits it if there's a way it can get in it's got to be sealed 
because water will find its way in. Even like down inside here, right there, everywhere, everywhere you can think of. All we do is just put, this is just protecting the, the awning on the back. That's what that is. We just want to protect it so we don't get anything on it. So, that's us so far. We'll be back with more great adventures at RV Rubenstall. I gotta put a clap effect in here. I wish still at the back of this. So here's this uh, of this road warrior. And then as I shot the camera off, and I took this out, and I was just telling you about silicone. See the silicone there? Ta-da! There, silicone gun. They did put them over the screws, which most I've never seen that. It's kind of smart. They just use the wrong product. They just rub it a little bit. Ta-da! Do another one. You just pull right up. Ta-da! Doesn't stick. They don't use silicone. This, you've seen it here. Seen it here at RV Roof Install. Do not use silicone. Hey, look at it all. Just peel right up. That's already rusty. So if that silicone was still in that screw, it wouldn't have been rusty. So, I already did that one. That's how I knew it was bad. And I said, I'm going to get the camera and show this. I was just talking about it. Let me put it back on. So, that says, if I see something else, I'll put the camera back on again. What the heck? Try to educate people here. If you go to our website, rvroofinstall.com, there's a lot of information on there. You don't want to do these things twice. They're too expensive to do twice. It's a lot of work to do them in the first place if you do it correctly. But um, so we're probably obviously when we do these roofs, we're not going to use tape. The membrane we're going to be putting down is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO, really a thick membrane. It's a commercial grade where you're going to see it on a hotel, an office building, a library, restaurant. So the roll comes in 10 foot widths. This coach, even from here all the way over to the other shoulder, is probably about eight and a half, you know, maybe a little over, uh, eight, nine. But anyhow, the rest of it, we make little strips out of them. We put the strips right here. You'll see it on a few others. You'll see it on this if you keep watching. We'll put a strip right down here, which will protect this so you don't have this, this uh, sharpness even compromising the main roof. Now, that 60 mil is really, really strong anyways, but still, you want to protect it. It's just smart because you have these little sharp edges here and as this road coach is going down racking and twisting like that right there as it's racking and twisting I don't want to poke a hole in there you know you get a leak and a leak down here will get behind the phylon cause the lamination you know we like our customers come back for good reasons not for failures unnecessarily that's for sure if they're here and you know something hasn't worked we want to fix it we want to do it right we want to find the root cause of things and do it correctly I don't want to you know do it half done or See, that's kind of sharp, so that's why I said you got these here too. So we'll put those strips on there. The other place we're going to put the strips is where they put the fancy dancy um, mesh. That's all that is, it's just drywall mesh. They, they'll put that on there. Just the reason they do it is just to pro try to prevent the roofing, the rubber roofing, from sagging in that joint, and that's supposed to help balance it out. But we're going to put it on there just in case there's any um, difference in. The thickness of the material usually osb oh, as a rule it's pretty good but it still has its little burpage where you may have a couple of these little flakes or one edge just a little thicker than the next from piece to piece it's not very much but i just don't like to see that so we put the nice protective strips on there and i don't want any again anything to compromise the main roof so that's why we do it so okay onward onward with the roof i don't want to set okay so what we got is one side already down. You can probably faintly see the protective strips, but I'll show you over here. We've already got them down. There wasn't any repairs done on this. You see we got them all in there like we normally do. So we're going to peel this back, glue it. We already did this side over here. That's about where we're at so far with this big old road warrior. And then now obviously the curbs and everything. we got different curbs going on here. They're more shallow. This son of a gun is tall. It is real tall. So by the time we put our curbs and he, we put the ACs back on, the AC that goes there, there's three of them. By the time we do all that, we'll be sitting at just at probably 13.6 or 13.5 and 15 sixteenths or something. <laughs> so we made them shallow. And you'll see when we go to put them on. But anyhow, that's where we are so far. So we'll, we'll be back with more. We're going to pull this back like I said. There's our big with. road warrior. All right. I wanted to show you this. This is the ladder rung that came off. It goes way on the top where that ladder is right there. So it sits on the roof. Like grab handles. But this is just some 
cheap aluminum. That's all it is. Evidently, he hit something with it. And it bent it all up. Got crookified. The other one's bent up worse than this. So we fabricated some new ones. And we just painted them. So we're going to put those on there. Those are actually real steel on here. They're a lot stronger than what he's going to have. So, and also, uh, the way they put the, the screws in there, there's these tiny nuts that go up inside there, but they're right here. And that's not enough holding power. That's why you get all that wiggle. And that's why it, it always wobbles so much, because I don't want to set them. I set them all the way back, but I use a longer bolt, and the ones we use are all galvanized. So, they'll be much stronger. But those ones are just so bad, I said the heck with it, and we, we built these ones here. All right, so this Road Warrior, that's where the grab handles are that sit right up here, the ones that we just refabbed back down there in that bench, right there. So I figured I'd give you an update on where we're at. We got the boots ready to go over here. You can see them all over here, and we got all these welded. These curves are more shallow because this thing is so daggum tall, we had to keep them low. But they still have all the same flashing detail on there. You can see it. Still got all the same. But we just uh, I made them a little more shallow. So this way we'll keep them uh, road legal. Road legal is 13.6. Well, that's what we did all of these. And then uh, now we already got the turn bar on. Obviously you're going to have to wash the roof down and everything. So uh, we got all that on. And let's see. What else can I show you? That's about it. We haven't got the first strike of caulking on here yet. That's not done yet. We got our shoulder all welded in here. When you come down on these transitions on these type, I don't know if you can see this, but if you look at that turn bar, this is your termination bar. When you look at it, it comes in, then it goes down a little bit. So when you bring the sheet up, it leaves like a little pucker, which is known as a fish mouth. So what we do is we kind of fold it, and then this isn't cut. We just folded it and hemmed it, and then we uh, heat welded it back together. It's still one piece. We didn't make a cut in it at all. So we got all that, and we got the, um, this is for the antenna, which is right here. That's the one he chose. I call those bat wings or boomerangs. But this is a WineGuard 71, so we'll mount that on there. And then now uh, we got a huge skylight over there which actually is sitting right here, so we cleaned it up. And then we're gonna get that mounted, get new fans. He bought new fans to put in here, so we're gonna put them on as well. We already got our logo done, right here. We got the back. So this is, uh, just give you an overview. Yeah, this awning taped up real well. We had to open it up so we could put the there's a termination bar back in. Then we get another track going in there. It just covers the covers the screws. That's all. And that's about us. So far, just giving you this little bit of an update. This is our massive heat gun that we use to weld everything. Use some cord hung up over here. Let me get you. There you go. So right now what we're doing is after we weld them, we go back and check them, make sure everything's nice and tight, make sure we've got every single whisker down. That's what we're doing right here. There's a tattoo man. Just want to make sure it's all tight. And like I said, the that lens that's over there, that's over there that I showed you, that one there is all set. And like I said, we'll get this all welded. Clean. Like again, the roof needs to be clean for sure. There's that big monster of a roller we use to press everything down. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Well, the next video you'll probably see is when it's all completed. And then we'll um, give you the whole we're done deal. <laughs> down the set. This is our road warrior. We're done. We're completed. Got all our boots in right here around our around our uh, ladder. Got our stands in the back of the AC. You got two strikes going down the side here for our caulking. Everything's all been heat welded in. We already showed you some of this already, how we had to make them shorter so this coach would meet legal road height requirements. Uh, you can see all our, I think you can see, yeah you can. You can see all the protective strips we got in there. We've also got them on the shoulder here as well, going down here because there's a metal there's a metal shoulder going on this side. 
Uh, let's see what else we do. There's a nice grade color, 60 mil commercial grade TPO. Everything all, like I said, heat welded. And that one over there as well. Got the boomerang. That's us. Then the other thing we did on the ACs, as you can see, we've got this flashing detail on there. And what that flashing detail does is when the rain's coming down, when the rain's coming down this way, even though the rain's coming across, those flanges that we built into it prevent it from running up onto or around the AC. But obviously there's going to be rain coming down, and when it does, it'll hit this, and it'll push it underneath that flange, and then it'll roll out the back. That's, uh, that's what we got. Same thing on our plumbing. Everything's all done there. Got a nice little bell cap. The good part about the way we do those is they're much like the ladders, how they're filled. But if that cap, if it ever got popped off from a, a tree branch or something, it wouldn't leak. Unlike the typical RVs, if they pop off, you got to leak. Not here. We do the fail safe. These are the rungs that we redesigned. I built these. We showed you that on the other clips there. So those are a lot stronger. Those are by far a lot stronger. We got the RVRoofInstall.com, November 18. The same thing with the radio here. We put this in here. So these are the way the boots are. That's real flexible. I mean, the product is flexible. Obviously, the antenna is as well. But the same there, so you have this product is around, there's that plumbing pipe over there. And the, the way the pipe is, I can't reach it, I'm too short. The plumbing cap right there, just, there's a spring in it. When you put it inside it, snaps against the inside of the plumbing pipe. But all around the pipe, but inside the boot, is that product there, which is a portable sealer. And uh, a couple of the other things we did is went around and checked all the slide outs. We did seal the slide outs and get them all squared away. There's only three, there's one down there, a couple on the other side. But the tape was already coming loose, and this is a 2017. And then we get a fancy curb that we built as well for the uh, skylight right here. Same same thing, same design. It's just you know, a lot more uh, shallow than what we normally do. Again, to keep this, I could have raised this one up despite all those, but I just wanted it to be all consistent. But. So again, when the water is coming across here, it's going to hit up inside here, and it's going to get forced to roll out. So you get some covers right there for your max airs, another plumbing there. So that's about us. Again, we got two strikes on here. You want to put two strikes. One thing that's important, and a lot of times you get some failure in here on your typical RV coach. I don't know if you can see that little bit of yellowness right there. That's a special primer that we use, and it will pull that caulking right in. If you don't use that, it won't seat. In other words, it won't, it won't adhere well. It doesn't matter what brand it is. It, you have to have that primer on there. It doesn't matter if it's this roof, PVC roof, any other, any other company brand, or even rubber. And that's where they just chip, jip you over there, the manufacturer and the RV service center, because they don't want to take the time. You can imagine, you can see that little bit of coloring in there. You, so you have to put that on just about as wide as you're going to put your caulking on there. If not, you're going to see it all up and on here. So we got to take little paintbrushes and we got to paint that in there nice and clean so it doesn't look bad. You want to see all that primer all the way up and around here on the edge and everything. It just wouldn't look well. So, Well, that's our Road Warrior. And they're going to come get it here in a few minutes. Thanks for watching. There's more on our YouTube channel if you haven't been there. If you are there, you can click on the videos and the, you can watch more, all, what do they call it, uploads, watch your uploads and subscribe, share, all that cool stuff. There's plenty of information on our website, rvroofinstall.com, and uh, give us a call here at 423-475-7663, that spells roof. So, what we're doing here is uh, some more artist work, here's how particular we are. But we tried to clean when it got this poured it left a little residue on there and it just stuck real well we didn't like it so what we're doing now is taking a little paintbrush and painting it in there we get paid to do a professional job and that's what we want to push for thanks for watching